Mr. Heavyweight Boxing today. Hey, what's up, man? This is Chris the Nightmare Ariola, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight Boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man, so I got a special guest on today, 14-0, eight knockouts, Gregory Bad News Corbin. What's up, Greg? What's going on, man? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. So, so, I see your last fight you had. That was in January, correct? Right. Okay, and you went uh, 10 rounds with uh, Grover Young. Experienced journeyman type fighter. Uh, what did you learn from that fight? Man, I learned a lot, man. Um, uh, he was a southpaw coming in, and I haven't had any southpaw work. Uh, and it was a 10 rounder. Um Dude was, was 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 tricky. I read the 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 the, uh, the 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 thing you put up against uh, with me on now mm -hmm. um, about me fighting him, facing him, and you was saying that he's a tricky fighter. But I should be able to pull it out, pull it out. I pulled it out. But like you said, dude was tricky. Uh, he was pretty fast, and uh, they just let you know you can't judge a book by its color, and you just have to do your homework. Dude was good though, man. But I did pull it out. It was a unanimous decision. A ten round. I just paced myself and just tried to outscore uh, each round. Uh, dude had a little pop. I got the. I had to get so my game is, is, is just dude, man. He was a good fight. It was a good fight for me. It was a step up fight. Uh, get you out the chill. Get me out the chilling circuit. So you know, man. And and I'm grateful for it. I'm 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 accepting everything and embracing everything that comes my way now. As I go, as I get farther in this sport, man, as I grow, because there's going to be some times where you're going to be in a real tough dog fight, and you have to reflect to when you was in another dog fight and, and try to adapt to the situation, man. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good learning experience, man, and how that some stuff I had to come on, had to work back on my footwork and get in and out with the, with the, uh, with the side piles and stuff and, and punch a little more and, and what, what, uh, what hand to lead with, combinations to lead with. It was just a lot, man. And, and that's what we really been working on. And right after that fight, I don't know if you know or not, should, uh, I didn't even come home, man. I went straight to camp from that fight. I went straight to Wilder Camp when he was getting ready for somebody, but he ended up fighting Jerry Washington, though. So, yeah, and then, uh, right after that, I've been, after that, I came to another camp with Briggs. So, man, I've just been moving around, uh, staying busy, man, trying to work on this craft, man. Okay. And then a fight before that, I have uh, looked online, I was looking at your fights, and I seen you fought Roberto Santos, and you mentioned um, you mentioned that Grover Young went southpaw, and that Roberto Santos fight, I actually saw you switch to southpaw. Is that something you've done throughout your career? Or is it something you just tried out in that fight? Right. No, no, uh, how can I put it without giving so much away? Well, it really don't make a difference. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I can fight from either stand. It's just uh, orthodox is primary. But when I go southpaw, um, it's, it's just I turn southpaw when I think I see something. Okay. And then you started your career 2012, Greg. You're uh, 36 years old, but. Some fans might not know that you were a, a top-ranked amateur back in the day. Can you just give the listeners a little bit of history about you coming up through the amateurs and speak about the 2008 Olympic Games? Right. Uh, yeah, man, uh, I actually started boxing. Let me take my way back. I started when I was eight years old, man. I started training. Uh, I started at the local West Dallas Boys Club right here uh, in Dallas. I never... I never competed though for some reason. I, I always played football and baseball and basketball. That was my sport. So when I then went to college, I, I, I ended up leaving college, man, for whatever reason. And I came home. And I just told one of my buddies, man, I said, man, I'm supposed to play the boxing. And and then I went back to boxing, man, and I was um, I actually won the. Um, like the gloves and all the, the, the gloves, the state gloves, and all that three years running. And I went to the National Golden Gloves three years in a row. And I ended up winning in 05, the National Golden Gloves. Um, I went to all the other local tournaments, I mean, the national tournaments also. I come up short, uh, like quarterfinals or something. So I was doing real good. So I was ranked, I got ranked in the, in the amateur program. Uh, I ended up being number one, number two, number three uh, in the world. And I fought 
the U.S. team versus London and stuff like that. Um, I was 04. I was trying to make the 04 team. I lost in the Western Trial in Bakersfield, California. So uh, I can't remember dude's name. He was a police officer from my thought. He was a home favorite. Uh, ain't no excuses. I lost. They said I lost by half a point. I don't know what's a half a point, but <laughs> right. Um, then, so I just kept pushing though, man. And I was trying to make the way me. Uh, in the midst of all that, man, I got in a little trouble, man. I in these streets, messing around, and and got hit with a conspiracy, a, a drug conspiracy. So I ended up going down, doing like seven years in the in the federal penitentiary. And man, after that, I come home. Um, they wanted me. They were like, man, you should be able to try to make the next Olympics. I was like, no, I got a family, man. So it's time to. If we're going to do anything, we need to make our move right now. So I turned pro, and now here I am, 14 and 0 as a pro. And been fighting since 2012, man, um, and just trying to trying to make some waves in this sport. Who are some of the guys you grew up watching, not just in Dallas, but just some of the other fighters you watched on TV growing up? Man, my dad was a, my dad is a major fight fan, man. So since me and you same age, so we was we both ate it, baby. So uh, you know, back then it was VCRs. Yeah. <laughs> uh wasn't no DVDs and all that. So man, every time a fight come on, my dad had he was recording it. Mainly because he'll fall asleep and he wanted to wake up and watch it the next day. <laughs> but still. Um, so I end up watching my man, some of my favorite fighters is, is Holyfield and and uh Riddick Bowe, Mike Tyson. And people like that, Roy Jones. Uh, and I can need to go back when I was. The fighters who I did fight, I, I watched Sugar Ray fight. Um, and then uh, we got, we actually got a few fighters down here that that made a few ways. We got uh, Cedric Rose, we got Curtis Cozy, he was a champion. Yeah, I ended up watching a few of them, man. Just, just doing my research on people, man. Mm-hmm. And, um, and just try to do a lot of, Another dude who I like uh, from 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 Texas, me and him actually is the only two super heavyweights to win a um, national championship in the Golden Gloves. It's George, me and George Farmer. We're the only one super heavyweight from Texas to win the national Golden Gloves. So I'm honored to have my name next to his, man. Yeah, that's a huge honor, man. Big George, that's one of the best, not just heavyweights, but one of the best fighters in the history of boxing, man. So that's definitely a good accomplishment. Exactly, yeah. And then speaking of Dallas, man, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna, I'm keeping in Dallas for one more minute here. Uh, how big of an impact has it been since Errol Spence went to the UK and he stopped Kell Brook for the Dallas area? Man, the city been going crazy behind dude, man. I'm and, and I'm I'm really proud of myself. I uh, I know Errol Spence from if it makes any sense from a distance. We like we we know he, he when we was having local fights here and I was and I was like I am now still been coming he'll come through the fights and then and, and, and speak to us and, and do his thing you know he wasn't on no no big man stuff he so he, he still showed his support for the for the locals um, so yeah man I'm behind him I was I was happy when he went up there and and, and somebody that was back here and won that and they won that title man that was that just that just shows, man, hard work and dedication takes you a long way. And then, Gregory, man, being locked up, you said seven years, right? Right. Being locked up for those seven years, I understand you're thinking about family, your life, other things, but was there? did you ever think about boxing when you were locked up, or was it just far from your mind? No, actually, man, I thought about it every day. It was like, I was really trying to, trying to, make a decision within myself like man is we gonna do this or, or is we just gonna go out and work for some some just just work for the rest of our life or we're gonna try to make something so man every day i got up man, and just try to keep myself busy i played i did whatever i had to do it now man i worked out constantly played every sport and just made it um just made it routine man to get up and just make make myself better and be in the best shape because when I know when I come out, if we're going to do it, we can't be playing. So, yeah, I thought about boxing every day, man. Okay. Every day. It was not a day one by that I didn't think about it. And then speaking of weight, 
Uh, I know for the Grover Young fight, at least according to box rec, you know, sometimes it's inaccurate. But according to box rec, it said you came in at 265. And I was looking at your other weights from other fights. And that, that seems to be your career low as far as when you turn professional. Is that an ideal weight you want to be? Do you want to be lower? Do you want to be higher? Or is it that, that the good weight for you right Actually, there? Actually, man, uh, that, was, that was a good weight. I mean, it was, that, was, that was good. I had been working on my weight. I'm, I'm trying not to fight at 270, anything no more. I really wanted to fight late. Like, when we was making an Olympic run, I was trying to get my body down to, to 250. I was, cause every fight I was fighting, uh, 270, 270 plus. But I can fight though, and I can move with it, I can carry it. But, um, when I came home, see, I really didn't live weights, or, uh, uh, really just home like that till I went down. And then I fell in love with, like, working out like that. So, when I come home, I'm 262, with a low body, body fat count. Okay, like, probably for me, it was 14, 15%. So I'm, I'm 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 loving that look. Uh, so that's why I'm really trying to focus on now, trying to get my body back down uh, to about two sixty. Yeah, about two sixty. Uh, if I can get to two fifty five, that'll be great. But you know, we'll see. All we gotta do just just keep working out every day, man, and I just keep pushing for it. I'm trying not to fight at 270 ever again, man. That, I'm the lower, they, everybody say the lower you are. I don't want to be too little, but I want to give myself a shot where, I, you know, cause 10 rounds was, 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 that was my first time ever going 10 rounds. I wasn't gassed, but, um, I know if I, if I lose a little more weight, I'd be pretty good and I would still should and still be sharp. Okay. And then speaking of that Grover Young fight, you, you mentioned after the fight you went right back into camp with Deontay Wilder. Uh, how did that right. phone call come about? Is Wilder somebody you knew from the amateur days? How, how did that come about? No, uh, actually, uh, I never I never met Wilder until they called me until I come home. And I was watching this fight. I don't know, I know about him. But just one day uh, when he was getting ready for, uh, I think it's the Stephen fight, they called me into a forest camp. And um, ever since then, I've been going to every camp for every fight since then, since the first time he fought Sofern. Okay. And then how about the Shannon Briggs call? How did, how did that come about to go work with him? Um, My uh, dude who managed me, they know, uh, they know three, uh, Shannon people, coaches pretty well. And uh, they put a call in down there. And I think uh, Shannon was pretty impressed on, on the work he got. And he loved it. So, um, yeah, so we built some type of, we built a, built a relationship. He called me uh, a few times, wanted me to come back to camp um, when he was getting ready for this fight. Okay. Uh, the only reason I left camp was he was doing some promotion and stuff. And he was gone for a while. So okay. they sent me back home. And then he came and did. He was uh, actually holding camp somewhere else out of the country. At the time, I didn't have a, a passport, so I couldn't get out there. And then usually, Gregory, I know they say uh, what goes on in camp stays in camp. But just were you um, happy with your performance in camp when you were going in there with Wilder and Briggs and all the other guys? Were you happy with what you were able to do? Right, man. Now, from the from the first, uh, like when when I first get there. I tell myself, hey, man, these guys are regular guys. 